You know, I actually had to Google what Tiger Mommy meant because I was so inundated with Tiger King memes that I did not remember what this old saying meant. It's funny that I say old when it's really not that old. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode two of Supernatural season eight. What's up, Tiger Mummy? Now, funnily enough, I actually really enjoy this episode for a multitude of reasons. It continues to delve into what has made Dean who he is. This I don't give a shit about anyone anymore kind of almost inhuman attitude. Also, what happened to him in Cass? At least the breadcrumbs are still continuing to lay. Carver is actually giving you a story. He's not giving it to you all at once. But I do like the breadcrumbs that are being led in that story because they know that they don't have enough to fill up a whole episode with the whole uh, Kevin Tran, his mom, and the tablet auction thing, but they still have enough that they can continue on to that storyline. Admittedly, while you would have liked to have seen it in Purgatory the whole time, it would have been a little bit weird. Bojo probably wouldn't, couldn't have done it. So to see this little sprinkle in amongst the main storyline was fun. I ran away. You ran away. The episode itself actually runs pretty well. I do like Kevin Tran's mom. Is that what you've been doing all year? Watching television? But holy shit, we are beginning the downfall of the Tran family because nothing happens, nothing good happens to these guys, as we will see as the show goes on. But already by the end of the episode, his mom's lobotomized because Crowley took hold and almost killed him. And this is also the episode where Sam gets Thor's hammer. I forgot that this is where it happens because we start the episode off with the old crony dude going to get the number one box in the safety deposit box of the bank and in the end he kills the woman. And you're kind of wondering where is that coming back to? And when they come to the auction part of the episode, you find out that he's been there to try and get the hammer. Where'd you get the five eighths of a virgin? <laughs> No. And you kind of wonder who he is because my first initial thought is Loki. I'm like, no, wait, that's not Loki, or at least maybe that is the actual Loki because as we know, Gabriel took the moniker of Loki. For all I know, Supernatural probably changed the entire lore. I do remember there being an episode with Gabrielle having an episode about Viking mythology. And I think I remember being disappointed with that episode. So if I am incorrect or correct, Please explain down in the comments below and love how you guys are just absolute knowledge basins when it comes to this stuff. Going back to the actual episode, it is setting up stakes. It's setting up just how brutal this fight is going to be to try and get this tablet because they get so close to a win, yet they still lose with Crowley lobotomizing Kevin's mom and then Kevin and his mom running away. All that's left is Crowley has the tablet that the brothers don't have. Kevin. And that comment that Kevin leaves saying that I'd rather not be around a person who doesn't care if people I care about get dead. And really Dean isn't helping himself out there. He does make the comment about, yeah, you know, I, I tried to stab Kevin's mom while she was possessed by Crowley. Sure, I would have felt awful about it, but what's any different from well, everything else we've done? And it really kind of plays back into the reason why Sam gave up the life. Like, if Dean wanted any good reason as to why, he is literally answering Sam for himself. I do notice that they didn't talk anything about Sam's past story, and I know I didn't talk about it in the first episode review, but to be honest, I don't care. Because as we will see after, I think it's the fourth or the third episode of this season, after that, if I'm correct, the whole other lady storyline is just going to eventually whittle away. It is going to away as unimportantly as Castiel's wife who yeah in this episode Castiel says that he's running away from everything from Dean because the Leviathans are after him and he wants to keep Dean safe and I am happy that's there but again I don't remember really how the season goes and my initial thought is that okay we're going to completely erase all of the development that Castiel had in the last season as orally put together as it was in season seven there was development and to just like get rid of it and just toss it out the window would have been like ugh. tiger mommy is a solid episode it's not stand out it is it is episode two of a 23 episode order but it's a decent one and it is keeping me intrigued and i'm very much excited to watch the next one so in the end i'm gonna give this episode also a four out of seven i like how it 
delved more into this character of Dean that is a dick, but he is an understandable dick considering where he's come from, unlike season seven Dean or season six Dean. So at least it has that going for itself. But those are my thoughts about this episode. Let's read off what you guys had to say. All right, first one here from Matt. Uh, with Sarah Gamble's era proving decisive for fans, the show needed a new life. Enter Jeremy Carver. I'm a huge fan of this guy. I like being human, Do Doom Patrol, and uh, Frequency was a misfire. Yeah, I, I could tell you that while I was working on it. But hey, if Eric Kripke can make the boys, season two and three, he gets a pass as well. I don't get what that comment is. Are you trying to say the two and three are bad? Like, the show has gotten progressively better with each season. Jeremy Carver has an amazingly insane over-the-top style with everything he does and is extremely entertaining. His era is arguably the renaissance of the show, and it's not only brought back from the slumber, focusing once again on the battles between heaven and hell, but it also expanded the lore and the character development for the boys. This season is particularly a favorite of mine, carried masterfully by Mark Shepard, who is bringing his best as he takes the mantle of the main villain. The premiere gave me back my interest in the show, while episode 2 gave us a cool setup with the auction. It reminded me of season 5 episode where all the gods came together for a common purpose, and here everyone literally wants a piece of Kevin. It's also nice that we were, we were introduced to a friendlier angel, Alfie, showcasing that all angels are dicks. A gray area Jeremy Carver has masterfully explored. I also love Dean's story in Purgatory and his state. Now, uh, he was a long, he was away so long from his brother, and he has PTSD to the point where he lashes out at nowhere at times. I love the fact that Purgatory left a mark on him and is explored later on. At first, it's not as touched on as it should be. Like he's just kind of awake all the time. But I don't know about the PTSD. I feel that that was done much better when he came back from hell, which obviously a different sort of situation. But yeah, it does get expanded on a little bit more later. And Angela here. Out of all the female characters that I've, I've appeared in the series and, and the series, Kevin's mom really sticks out. She's quite a character, way more braver than her son. To me, I also enjoyed the scenes in Purgatory. I love the cinematography. I really wish that half of the season was fully centered in Purgatory. I know it's a weird thing to say, but I did enjoy it. I I'll admit I liked it better than Purgatory World. Or sorry, not Purgatory. Um, a hell world or alternate universe like that bullshit weird red and gray filter that um andrew dab like wow he just basically just added red to the purgatory filter anyways yeah it's better than that one if it had been the entire time in there it would have been a little hard to endure i think so that's why i like it how it's in pieces uh, someone also points out a mistake I made. In season uh, six of episode one, uh, Dean actually says to Sam that he tried to get him out of the cage, even though he promised he wouldn't. Uh, Dean, I looked everywhere. I collected hundreds of books trying to find anything to bust you out. You promised you didn't. You'd leave me. Uh, leave it alone. Of course I didn't. In my opinion, Sam a Act is mature enough, and we will see a change in his character in season ten. Yeah. No, nope, that that's true. Um, yep. Yeah, you pointed me out really. <laughs> Going down to Cookie here, quick review. The season is hard to watch for me, and despite the average rating of five, most of it comes to the second half of the season, which is mostly good. My issue with the first half mostly is the pacing. I'm not a fan of the flashbacks were done. They're used in nearly every episode in the first half, and it's forced terribly forced into each episode. Bad pacing will always be a bad issue during Carver seasons eight and ten. I actually kind of like the 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 flashbacks because nothing's really happening in the main story i think it's kind of interesting to see what could have happened with sam and them but i can understand also why some people didn't like it well season eight for me is kind of eh. it starts out boring like six but neither interesting and exciting like seven it's just okay nothing special like half of the season is uh, seven was never interesting or exciting to me though <laughs> But yeah, that's your opinion. Okay, guys, those are your thoughts about this episode. Thank you again for giving them. And now we've got Heartache. Please give me guys his thoughts about that episode in the comments below, and I'll read this off in the next review. Until then, guys, if you like this review, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And then I'll see you guys on the next one.